Hey everyone, the one and only again, and we are live, only this time bringing you a speed test that I myself was very curious about. You see, the MacBook Pro got a very slight update this year, basically just improving the processor, and that's basically about it. Oh, they also apparently fixed the keyboard issue, so maybe after four generations of the butterfly keyboard, Apple finally gets their shit together and finally pulls through. Anyway, I myself was wondering if this upgrade was worth it, so today, we're doing something a bit different. Not necessarily a review, but rather, an in-depth look into four machines and doing a variety of tests to see which is the quickest of them all. Our four contestants are the newly refreshed base MacBook Air with 256GB of storage, the base 2018 15-inch MacBook Pro in silver, the newly refreshed fully spec 2019 15-inch MacBook Pro with the improved chip and also Vega graphics, and also a fully spec 2019 iMac desktop. This video is not only intended for me as I myself am curious what kind of performance gains the newly refreshed MacBook Pro has over its predecessor, but also to see how it compares to my day-to-day -day production machine, my beloved iMac, and also against my portable MacBook, that being the Air. This video could also be useful for any of you intending to buy a MacBook Pro or iMac for light video editing, gaming, or even photography, or simply planning to upgrade from older MacBooks. Comment down below which of these machines will edge out overall in these tests, and without further ado, let's jump straight in. Okay, so first things first, we have to lay out the specs of each machine as it lays the groundwork in hypothesizing which machine will come out on top and to also try to decipher which product is meant for who. Whether you want to use this for like gaming, video editing, programming, simply web browsing, or whatever your use case may be. We'll start first with our MacBook Air that recently got a big redesign. I have mine here in pink and honestly dig the color. This here sports a 1.6 GHz dual core 8th generation Intel Core i5 processor capable of turbo boosting up to 3.6 GHz, 8 GB of onboard DDR3 memory, a 256 GB SSD, and also features Intel UHD graphics 617. Next Next up, the 2018 15-inch MacBook Pro in silver. Now normally when you order a stock 15-inch MacBook, and by that I mean not configuring it to a better processor or graphics card, you have two options. There's one for $2400 and one for $2800 USD. This is the 2800 model that has a 2.6 GHz 6-core Intel Core i7 capable of turbo boosting up to 4.3 GHz, 16 GB of DDR4 memory, Radeon Pro 560X graphics, and a 512 GB SSD. Our next competitor is the newly refreshed 2019 15-inch MacBook Pro fully specced out except for the storage in space gray. It features a 2.4 GHz 8-core 9th generation Intel Core i9 processor capable of turbo boosting up to 5.0 GHz, 32 GB of DDR4 memory, a Vega 20 graphics card with 4 GB of HBM2 memory, and a 1 terabyte SSD, which in this test, the SSD shouldn't make a difference almost at all. Lastly, we have the big boy, the beloved iMac desktop. This iMac comes juiced up with a 3.6 GHz 8-core 9th generation Intel Core i9 processor capable of turbo boosting up to 5.0 GHz, 40 GB of DDR4 memory, and you might be asking yourself why 40? Well it came with 8 GB of onboard RAM, but the iMacs are awesome because you can upgrade the RAM yourself and save a ton of money. So I bought a 32 GB kit and installed it myself, bringing it to 40 gigs. It also features a Radeon Pro Vega 48 graphics card with 8 GB of HBM2 memory and a 3 TB Fusion Drive, which does affect startup speeds. I decided to get a Fusion Drive simply because it is way more affordable and has the advantage of being a mix of a standard hard drive with moving components, but also integrates a portion of that space as an SSD so that your most used applications are stored in there to make things as efficient as possible. However, I do expect read and write speeds to be dramatically lower than the SSDs on the MacBooks. I wish the iMacs would all come standard with SSDs, but I guess we'll just have to wait. Anyway, now getting all of the specs out of the way, let's get started. 
I predict the iMac will come out on top simply because of its bigger chassis and ability to dissipate heat much better than the smaller chassis in the MacBook Pro and thus not throttling as bad. I don't think the additional RAM will make that big of a difference, but we'll see as this could also be good for consumers looking to buy a computer to see if a desktop with user accessible RAM would be better for you or not. First test is the classic Geekbench test to check the single core and multi-core performances of each device. This test gives us a general idea of how these devices are expected to perform, but doesn't show the whole picture. After running the test, we get the following results. The MacBook Air received a score of 3900 on the single core side. The 2018 MacBook Pro got a single core score of 5280, while the 2019 model got 5904, about a 12% increase, and lastly, the iMac got a score of 6293, being about 61% better than the single core score on the Air. On the multi core side, we get 7200 85 on the air for the 2018 model we have 22,596 as comparison with 31,178 for the 2019 model which equates to about a 37 percent increase which is quite impressive and lastly a score of 32,994 which is a whole 352 percent increase from the air so you can see that going from an air to an iMac desktop yields in massive improvements on multi-core up next I ran a Cinebench test which also taps into the CPU power of each device while also being able to have an idea of how these machines perform under extreme loads as during this test the fans on all four devices kicked up to high gear especially the air man i swear a plane was taking off outside my house for real anyway laying down the numbers the air achieved the score of 580 the 2018 pro 2438 for the cpu and then the 2019 bested that with 3318 signaling a 36 percent increase and the mighty imac had to step in and show them who's boss with an impressive 4065 so you can see why i prefer my imac to produce videos next up is a test for all my gamers out there or at least those who are interested in gaming on a mac this is the unigen heaven benchmark test now let me first start off by saying Macs have been notorious for not being the best machines for gaming. In this test, the GPU will be pushed to its limits to see how well it's able to handle frame rates and those Ultra HD settings that most games nowadays have. All settings were set to Ultra on all four devices and again, thought the MacBook Air was about to catch on fire. I even brought my fire extinguisher downstairs just in case, and for risking my livelihood and risking my house burning down aside from the endless hours put into this test, I would truly be grateful if you liked this video and also subscribe to my channel for future tests just like this. Anyway, let's get our scores. The Air came in with a score of 309, which is really weak and averaged a frame per second rate of about 12.3, which means your ass is gonna get clapped hard on Fortnite if you try to run it on this. The 2018 MacBook Pro fared much better, but still nothing to be proud of. The Radeon Pro 560X tried its best and squeezed out a score of 799 and averaged 31.7 frames per second while its direct successor, the 2019 MacBook Pro fully spec'd out, almost doubled that with the Vega 20 with a score of 1,411 and averaged 56 frames per second. So almost approaching that coveted 60 frames per second. Very surprisingly, the iMac achieved a score of 1,346, which is slightly less than the MacBook Pro 2019 and averaged 53.4 frames per second. So in terms of gaming, according to my test, the MacBook 2019 with Vega 20s has the best performance with the iMac Vega 48 coming in at a close second almost within margin of error. Either one you choose, if you plan to get any Mac, make sure to opt for a Vega graphics card if you're looking into gaming. Moving right along, we have our read and write test which taps into the hard drive and SSD to see how it performs. Now typically, an SSD is light years ahead of traditional hard drives and it never ceases to amaze me that Apple still includes fusion drives coming standard on base models and even has the audacity of having legit hard drives with physical moving components inside its smaller 21 inch models. It's insane. Having an SSD allows your computer to start up much quicker and apps in general open up quicker and your computer is able to retrieve documents, videos, and other things that are stored locally onto your SSD. Because the iMac has a Fusion Drive, while the MacBooks all sport SSDs, I predicted the Fusion Drive would show weaker results. Well, let's see. The Air has a score of 921.9 on the write speed 
and 2,027.2 on read speed, the 2018 MacBook Pro came in with 1,848.7 and 2,618.5 on write and read speeds respectively. Comparing to its successor, the results show 2,121.4 and 2,544.1 on write and read respectively, showing very similar results. The iMac on the other hand shows 734.7 on write and 2,423.8 on read, so suffers drastically on the write speeds as compared to its notebook counterparts, being even weaker than the air score on the write speed side. Now moving on to the test that interests me more, I'm referring to some video editing tests. As a YouTuber, processing and rendering speeds are everything, and I know that for many other bigger YouTube channels, time is money, so having a machine that can easily handle anything you throw at it, while also having reasonable quick export speeds is critical. While I would consider my video editing light video editing, I know many professionals that do huge 3D rendering models and spend several hours editing a video with plenty of 3D animations and several LUTs applied to their raw footage. For those of you interested, this test gives you a decent idea at how well these machines perform form while being under load against your standard light video editing tasks. For my first test, I took a 30 second clip and exported it using my compressor settings which are identical on all four machines. The iMac was the fastest exporting the 30 second clip in 1 minute and 25 seconds, while the 2019 MacBook Pro came in second exporting it in 2 minutes flat. Shortly after that, the 2018 model followed suit at 2 minutes and 18 seconds and the air struggling coming in dead last exported the video in a whopping 8 minutes and 31 seconds seconds for a 30 second clip with no edits. After this test, I decided to do the same thing except with a 5 minute clip and export it using the exact same compressor settings. It's funny because there was a huge storm here where I live, but that didn't stop my grind as I wanted to pump this content out to you guys, the one and only nation. Anyway, like I said, there was a huge storm and as you'll see, my lights actually went out at my house for several hours mid-test. I thought it was actually quite funny, but thankfully, this was the final test and then the lights went out. So shout out to God if anything. The iMac exported the 5 minute video in 13 minutes and 2 seconds. The 2019 MacBook Pro exported it in 18 minutes and 32 seconds, while its predecessor exported the same video in 22 minutes and 14 seconds, which equates to about a 19% increase in export speeds, and when time is money, this isn't that bad of a result in my opinion, but you'll have to draw your own conclusions to see whether an upgrade from a 2018 or older base model is worth getting that improved processor and Vega graphics card. Now I already knew the air was going to be last, but I didn't think it'd be this slow. Man, if I would have known it'd take this long, I would have hit the gym and grabbed the coffee from Duncan while I was at it since it didn't export the video until 1 hour and 26 minutes after the beginning of the test. And that's with no edits on this video. Imagine if it would have had several edits. Insane. So it's clear to see that for video editing, it can be done on the air, just know that export times will be painfully slow. It's funny because about 20 minutes before the air exported, you can see the lights went out. Of course, for video editors, edits will be made, but this gives a rough idea of how well each processor and graphics card performs while exporting and having edits will likely drag this video out to 25 minutes plus because of the air, so I didn't want to do that to you guys. However, if you want to see a separate video where I go in depth on video editing, comparing the 13 inch MacBook versus the 15 inch and maybe even throw in the iMac, let me know in the comments below. Well guys, I must say these videos are my favorite to make in my opinion. I'm really into numbers and analytics. I did graduate with a bachelor's in applied mathematics after all, so seeing these numbers and comparing them while translating to percentage gives us, the consumers, a rough idea on how our expensive machines will perform. After seeing these tests, you should be able to draw your own conclusions on which machine is right for you. Personally, I think the 2019 MacBook Pro fully spec'd out is the way to go since it is a portable machine and your iMac is stuck to your desk. However, if you do most of your video editing at home and don't really mind portability or if you don't really need a notebook in general, definitely go with the iMac. It's ultra powerful and it's my preferred production machine. Honestly, the MacBook Air is just not made for video editing or any extreme processing power. The MacBook Air is really meant for those people who really dig portability and just really need it for your basic tasks like emailing, browsing social media, or maybe getting a Word document in here and there. If you found this video useful, consider dropping a like. These results obviously don't show the whole picture as we all have different use case scenarios. 
Some of us like to buy MacBook Pros and be bougie and only use them for our college PowerPoints, while others take their work very seriously and buy Macs for programming or DJing or whatever their case may be. Whatever your use case is though, I hope you found my video and testing useful. As an appreciation for all the support, I have a big treat for you all. I have a giveaway that is ending on July 5th, 2019 for a chance to win a brand new pair of AirPods 2 or Powerbeats Pros, whichever you prefer. You get to choose. In order to enter, make sure to subscribe to my channel, give this video a like, and make sure to drop a comment on my official Powerbeats Pro review letting me know what your favorite movie of all time is. Guys, you have no idea how fun it is to put this content out for you guys. Keep the likes coming, keep the comments coming, but most importantly, thank you to each and every one of you for your continued support. Hope you can take something useful from all of my videos, and I hope you all have a wonderful day. Peace out.